Hi there, Steve here, Steve Kaufman, to talk about languages. And today I want to talk about dictionaries, all right? And uh, basically the reason I want to talk about dictionaries is because I was thinking about this person who asked me to do a video about the word get. And I thought, you know, you can look up the word get in the dictionary and you get, you get eight or nine different definitions, you know, and then some phrasal verbs with some further meanings. And you can read that, close the dictionary, and you won't remember much of what was there. That's sort of the reality of dictionaries. Now, I am a sucker for dictionaries, and I want to show you my collection. I just went and grabbed a few here. So, I don't know, Vietnamese. Before I went to Vietnam, I got this phrase book and dictionary. Spent six days in Vietnam. I came away able to use one word, come on, which means thank you. Nothing else stuck, zero. This was essentially useless. Same for Hebrew. Nothing stuck. Nothing. Nothing except what I learned through listening and reading on Link. Okay. But I have, okay, I have bought so many dictionaries, most of which I never read. But it's very tempting, you know, Chesko uh, Anglitsky Mluvnik, Chesko Anglitsky Slovnik, you know, Japanese English dictionary. What do we got here? English Japanese dictionary, okay, uh, from when I lived in Japan. English Korean, Korean English dictionary, English Chinese pronouncing dictionary, uh, essential Arabic vocabulary, uh, you know, Kankogugo Sentango, Korean, Handbook of Korean vocabulary, uh, Tuttle Learners Korean English dictionary, Oxford Russian dictionary, here's a German one, Grundwortschatz, Russisch. Uh, what else we got? Oxford Starter Dictionary. Xinhua Xinzo Mtsudian. It just goes on and on and on. And I've hardly used anyone, any of them. The only one I used was this one here, which is used, because I lived in Japan for nine years. And it has, this one has the great advantage that the, um, you can look them up in the Roman alphabet. So you hear a word, I live in Japan, I hear things, I can look them up and sometimes find something. I can find the meaning for something that I've been, that I've heard and I want to know the meaning of. But, but the temptation with the dictionary is that somehow you think that, you know, in this dictionary, there's a bunch of words and meaning. And if I read this, that all of that is going to enter my brain, but it doesn't happen that way. And so the, the dictionary has this great promise of enabling you to somehow shortcut the learning process by gaining all these words and your vocabulary is going to expand. But in fact, you need, like where I learn is from what you see behind me, books, CDs, listening, reading, letting the brain get used to the language and the sort of, you know, hitting a certain word and a meaning. No sooner do you close the dictionary than you've forgotten what was there. Uh, even when there is a meaning so often, you know, if you look up the word get, there's eight meanings. So which meaning are you going to take away from that? If, if I'm reading, uh, say on Link, where we have online dictionaries, which by the way is a big improvement, um, sometimes there are four or five meanings and sometimes they're totally unrelated meanings. So I take from that a very vague sense of what the word means. Uh, but it doesn't bother me because I know that as I continue to come across this word, in different contexts, gradually the range of meaning of that word and the range or the particular sense of that word that applies to a given context, all of that is gradually going to become clearer. But it'll become clearer only if I do enough reading and listening so that I encounter it in different contexts together with different words. And that way I acquire a sense of the language. Furthermore, dictionaries and and even in terms of learning the language those purists who say we should only speak the target language and the dictionary should be monolingual dictionary i don't agree with that at all I, I, you want to get in and out of the dictionary as fast as you can to get a bit of a hint of the meaning you don't want to spend all kinds of time trying to struggle through a a mean a description of the meaning in the target language where you encounter more words that you don't know and you come away without any sense of what the meaning of the word is you want to get a quick hint go back to your context it's the context that's going to give you the meaning 
And therefore, a bilingual dictionary where one of the languages is your native language or a language you know very, very well is much sharper, much quicker, much more effective than a monolingual dictionary. Uh, just as with my Japanese, if I were to try and look up a word in my Japanese dictionary using, uh, you know, hiragana or kanji and it becomes more complicated, it's the same with Chinese dictionaries. If you have a Chinese dictionary, uh, I would only use one that is based on pinyin so that you can go in there based on the phonetics of the word. Uh, when we started with Chinese, we had to, you know, figure the, the words in the dictionary were divided up based on word count, like a stroke count. So, you know, once all the words that had all the characters that had like three strokes, four strokes, five, it took forever to find it. And you're going to forget it anyway, so that the quicker you're in and out, the better. And nowadays, of course, the dictionary that I use the most is Google Translate. I have it on my, I have a bunch of dictionaries on my iPhone, but the only one I ever use is Google Translate. And uh, so if I have a word that I've come across, whatever, I put it in there, I get the meaning gone. I probably forget it again, but it satisfies, and that's the main role of a dictionary. And that's why the sort of online dictionary is so good, because it satisfies your immediate need to get a sense of what this word might be mean. So even though you may forget it, it satisfies that need right now in a given context to get some sense of what the meaning might be. Very often, especially for example in learning Korean, you're disappointed because the dictionary, for some, whatever reason, the Korean, you know, there's a range of possible meanings or it doesn't quite match the context and yet still that's all you have to go on as you work your way through this content and eventually it's the context that teaches you. So the conclusion is the dictionary is very tempting. Uh, you think it's a great source of knowledge of words. Uh, you might want to keep a copy, you know, right by the toilet. It's a good place where you have to sit, for, you know, you can, uh, you have this sense that you're learning something. It's interesting, actually. It's interesting. It's, it's interesting. It's like reading grammar rules. It's interesting. You're reading it, yet you can't retain it very well. You only retain it through the listening and reading. So the dictionary, you do need it because as you're working your way through content, okay, there's a bunch of words you don't know. You have to get a sense of roughly what that word might mean, how it ties into the rest of what you're reading. So you want to be in and out of that dictionary as quickly as you can. And that's why I tend to do my reading until I'm very good in the language. I do my reading on my iPad where I have access to online dictionaries and and furthermore, if I'm on link, I can look it up and save it to a database. I can possibly review it later on. And that way the dictionary is, is a minor part of my basically input-based learning strategy. It's no more than that. But dictionaries are tempting. Uh, I don't buy them as much now because I, I find them quite useless, but I have uh, bought a lot as I showed you and there's lots more here, but I'm not gonna show you them. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Bye for now and I look forward to your comments.